Good afternoon. Thank you very much for attending today's session. My name is Duane Savick. I'm one of the technical resources here at Ingram Micro. With me to, uh, today, I have Maria Iani, Product Manager. Hi, everyone. Yep. Um, what we'll cover off today is Cisco Umbrella, the first line of defense for threats on the internet. A um, bit about it. So what is Cisco Umbrella? Why Cisco Umbrella is important to your business? A quick one on how to license it and a quick demonstration of the dashboard. After this, we'll quickly go through some of our promos here at Ingram Micro and a bit about the cloud market price, marketplace. Um, in terms of questions, in the chat, you'll see my email address. Feel free to send any questions you have to my email address from there. I'll create a WebEx team group where we can all collaborate, ask questions. I'll keep it open for about a week or so. And that at least leaves it as an open forum. So any additional questions or follow-on questions you might have from today's session, happy to help or help get you in contact with the right people here at Ingram Micro. So interesting thing about Umbrella, I guess, is in today's cloud connected world, more than 50% of devices, so like used to be PC devices or now anyway, mobile devices. So how do you protect these devices in your network? And how do you protect these devices when they're outside your network? So that's, that's definitely a big challenge that uh, everyone's facing. And I guess with the transition from on-prem to cloud and accessing resources on the cloud, it's becoming a harder uh, task for security administrators and, and security fo focused indiv individuals, even businesses, I guess, um, to secure um, internal data, users, and um, equipment as well. So 70% of malware is unique to the organization. So it's not enough time to just detect malicious payloads. You need to be able to identify attacks before they are launched. And that's critical in, in, in today's time frame where most of the time we're working independently to identify you know, um, compromises within our organizations, but we're not doing enough to, to do an active job seeing it on a global scale and, and addressing them uh, faster than, um, you know, I guess faster than what we're detecting in, in our infrastructure. So what I'm trying to say there is, if, if the IOC is detected locally and it's, it's a unique instance to us, we'd, it would be better if we had that ability to share and collaborate that information in a global intelligence, um, a threat intelligence approach and be able to neutralize threats sooner and faster. Um, I guess for, more, for most organizations, the public cloud is now part of their environment. So either as applications like Salesforce, Google Apps, or other apps that the business deems necessary, but also mobile apps um, I guess the ones that users are using out there as well. And, and what we're doing is really placing an onus on the end user to take that security uh, focus in mind. And that, that's a tough thing uh, to do where it relinquish control of your security within your infrastructure and trust your users with whatever their apps or whatever the devices are doing on your, your network and I guess outside your network. Your data and apps are moving to the public cloud. And though this is excellent for business efficiency and innovation, it's a massive challenge to secure from the infinite number of attack vectors that are out there. So the challenge is security is delivered in a traditional sense, but we, but we can, I guess we connect and interface with um, in a new way. So we're accessing cloud resources. Um, we're accessing in, in infrastructure external to our own. And the problem is that the security piece hasn't quite been there for that. It hasn't been developed in the past for that. It was pretty much an on-prem solution, like you had a firewall, yeah, and that would defend your gateway. You'd have antivirus endpoint protection, that sort of thing at you know the, the client side. So I, I guess the value of Umbrella here is that it's a secure internet gateway. So a set of technologies delivered in the cloud, which allow you to protect your employees regardless of where they are, what devices they're on, and whatever time of day. So I remember a time where people would go, you know, can you get this job done? And most people will be like, yeah, I'll do it when I get back in the office. So with that in mind, I mean, the game's changed now. Now it's no longer, I'll do it when I get back in the office. It's about, I have access to resources anytime, anywhere, and I'm gonna access those resources. But from a security standpoint, what are we doing to protect that user's experience? What are we doing to protect the, the business IP? What are we doing to protect the integrity of um, everyone involved, I guess? So with Umbrella, you can stop the threats on all ports and protocols. Um, the good thing is, um, we can, I guess we can approach it with, as, a, as an early one, I would say stop threats earlier. So stay stuff like phishing, malware, ransomware, um, and that's, that's critical. So another cool thing is you can identify infected devices sooner 
and prevent C2 callbacks from achieving data exfiltration. So if we're talking about, say, a compromised device uh, on your infrastructure, then having Umbrella as a secure internet gateway there would at least give you visibility and early prevention, hopefully, against um, that malware or that phishing attack exfiltrating information out or you know, doing a C2 callback to download a, an exploit or you know, download encryption keys, that sort of thing. One thing that I will mention that I feel is important is the simplicity of the offering. The fact that it's as simple as going onto Cisco's website, <laughs> registering for a product, I guess as a trial here I'm talking, um, even if you do a purchase off Umbrella, the, the cool thing is it's as simple as from your, D, from your DHCP site, redirecting your DNS, or even from your DNS, just redirecting it to um, Cisco's Umbrella DNS. And that's a very easy step to accomplish. And on the dashboard, just adding the relevant network for visibility and control and policy enforcement and all of that. But what I find excellent about this offering is the fact that you can apply this at that one point within your infrastructure and you're protecting, as you guys can see, HQ, IoT, mobile devices. And as, what is it, um, by 2020, they're projecting, what is it, 20 billion, 50 billion? I can't remember, IoT devices within a network infrastructure. We, with those sort of numbers in mind, how, how are you going to manage and how are you going to secure those devices? I mean, if we're talking about, like say, healthcare industry, bringing in uh, new machines, um, wearable technologies, BYOD deployments, uh, tablets, and all of these devices that are brought into your infrastructure, how are you going to provide an, at least an early layer of protection without having to deploy a complex solution overall? So providing um, a secure internet gateway, something like Umbrella, really adds an excellent insulation and a buffer against those early threats. So the cool thing about Umbrella is not only does it protect your devices on-prem, it uh, protects your devices uh, offline as well. So if, if you know, the game's changed now, you know, you're no longer just working out of an office, you're working anywhere, anytime, accessing all resources. And though you might be secure within your network infrastructure, corporate HQ, your branch office, whatever it may be, but what are you doing when you go home to work? What are you doing when you're working from that cafe? What are you doing if you're you know, out on the road going to see a customer accessing their network infrastructure? You know, you're, you're placing a lot of trust and uh, response, I guess, um, the, the, all of that privileged information on your, inf uh, on your device at the mercy and, and uh, I guess at the point, I guess, um, their security um, technologies, strengths or weaknesses. So, you know, without knowing what that is, that's a lot of information to put on there and, and risk exposing. So how does Umbrella achieve, I guess, the visibility? It's with um, 80 billion DNS requests visibility daily uh, to protect partners that help automatically identify attack, attacking infrastructure. So attackers infrastructure and block before even the first victim is hit. So um, having visibility of that large of a um, pool of DNS requests daily and that much visibility of internet traffic globally gives uh, Cisco Umbrella a, a, a very strong and unique offering in terms of providing visibility at that grand scale, but also the predictability and an understanding of potential threats that are out there. So um, like malicious domains or threat actors that are prepping for, for an attack, a DDoS or you know, a, a phishing campaign or uh, you know, spam, whatever else it may be, a malware um, or even compromised sites out there or whatever it may be. All of these different attack me um, mechanisms, having that visibility to predict that in the likelihood that an attack is imminent or one that has been in progress for a while and we can apply relevant policy to block that earlier and obviously protect your, your infrastructure, be it on-prem, off-prem. So the cool thing is, um, with regards to this, like I said, on-prem protection, it's as simple as uh, diverting your DNS to Umbrella. Um, Off-network uh, coverage, as I mentioned there, AnyConnect integration. So there is a upgrade for the AnyConnect client to allow the Umbrella roaming component there. So that way you're always um, protected from that DNS a standpoint, or if you have a third-party VPN, you can always download the Umbrella roaming client as well as an option. So I'll show you back to, to you guys on the uh, dashboard just after this. So what sets Umbrella apart from the competitors? Uh, fastest, most reliable cloud infrastructure. In terms of deployment, 
definitely the easiest uh, to configure. Um, simple DNS, uh, just adding the DNS. If uh, what else? Most open platform for integration, third-party integrations, great. They have custom APIs as well for any additional uh, integration that you require to feed in uh, that data. Most predictive intelligence to stop threats earlier with you know, integration with Talos, uh, visibility of uh, all, all of this uh, internet traffic that was mentioned like 80 billion, I think it's a higher than 80 billion now, uh, DNS requests daily to determine and have that predictability. There. They have auto, uh, automation there and uh, analytics that are, and, um, uh, threat intelligence uh, individuals who, who understand how, how this how, how the landscape is and the, you know detect zero day threats um, with, with that in mind they have the broadest coverage and um, oh, broadest coverage there for malicious destination and file detection so integration with like advanced malware protection so and for endpoint uh, threat grid integration third-party integrations there as well even integrations like other Cisco offerings like cloudlock for uh, CABS uh, offerings as well Uptime, so in terms of, uh, what is it, since 2006, it's been 100% uptime, so it's a, it's a reliable solution, covers you inside of your solution, uh, inside your organization and outside your organization. In terms of deployment, like I just mentioned, easiest thing ever, just go to umbrella.cisco.com, um, register for a 14-day free trial, redirect your DNS uh, to, as you see there, 208, 67, 222, 222, I believe the other one is 220, and Go to the dashboard, add your network in there, you have visibility off, um, off, off of your network infrastructure there. The great thing about that as well is that you get great amount, a great amount of visibility as to what's happening on your infrastructure today. Most of the time, users don't know what's happening on their infrastructure. Um, you know, if, if we're talking about um, however many devices you may have, say, you know, when IoT becomes much more prevalent than it is even today, how what are those devices doing on your, uh, on your network? Uh, what times, what access do they have to resources? What's the likelihood that these devices can be compromised? All of this has to be taken into account and, and specific solutions deployed to uh, assist and remediate with certain um, vulnerabilities and uh, I guess, I guess uh, malware that's out there. So something like Umbrella really adds in a simplistic layer to protect all of your offerings from there. So how IT was built, I guess back in the other, back in the day, right? Everything used to be critical infrastructure on-prem, business apps, uh, you know, custom software, whatever it may be, was installed on a server infrastructure in a server room somewhere within the organization. Um, workplace desktops, everything was on-prem. Uh, wasn't really a, a mobile environment. You know, you come into the office to work as opposed to you can work anywhere, anytime. Um, interesting thing with like, you know, with wireless being a a massive prevalent enabler of um, doing business in different ways. Um, cloud and mobile being big drivers with regards to uh, removing that on-prem component, moving it out to the cloud, um, and mobile being able to work anywhere, anytime. It's, it's really put a lot of strain on, on existing organizations and their security posture. So a fine example for that would be, as you can see, uh, workplace desktops change to roaming laptops, mobile devices, endpoint devices that you, the user, carry around to do work anywhere, anytime. Um, branch offices, no, no longer just sending direct traffic via, say, MPLS, whatever it may be, or VPN connectivity. They now have direct internet access. So they're, you know, they're sending their traffic onto the internet, which is very much like the wild, old west, right? They, who knows what can happen <laughs> with regards to the information there. So having, having, having to manage that branch infrastructure, that remote um, user experience, so how do you apply security policy to that critical infrastructure that's uh, moving into data centers, uh, business applications are no longer on-prem, they're now in the cloud as well. How do we manage and how do we secure all of this? So these are all challenges that we're facing um, in, in today's infrastructure. And it's only going to get worse. It's only going to grow. And you know, as bandwidth grows, as you know, you know, new technologies come in that enable us to do business in new ways, we have to find ways to combat that as well. So something like uh, Umbrella as a, as a cloud delivered offering really gives it the scale that you, you can't achieve with having software installed on a local device or a hardware box that you have on-prem that you're trying to manage multiple sites and multiple users from with multiple applications. Uh, 
uh, as you guys can see from the slide deck there, um, as mentioned earlier, sorry, 50%, 49% work uh, workforce is now mobile. Um, and out of that number, 82% admit to not using VPN to connect securely back to HQ or back to your, your corporate re uh, resources. With that in mind, um, that, that leaves a large, a large number there of potential users that, or devices that can be uh, compromised by any anything from a, fish, a phishing campaign to malware or ransomware, anything out there really. Um, over the next few years, 70% increase in SaaS usage as well. And as I just mentioned earlier, with regards to branches now doing direct internet access, how are we, sec how are we securing um, our connection? How, how are we applying relevant policies to enforce and control what we have access to and what we're actually accessing as well and making sure that we're not accessing uh, malicious threat actors domains, uh, malicious threat actors uh, websites or uh, infrastructure. So the, the challenge there is the gaps in visibility and coverage, like with what's happening on your network infrastructure. Are your devices compromised? Are your devices healthy? Are your devices accessing, in, um, accessing information that is actually uh, reputable as opposed to something masquerading as that infrastructure. Um, cloud apps and shadow IT, being able to have that visibility of what's happening on your infrastructure. You know, like I mentioned earlier, with regards to end users bringing on their mobile devices and installing their own applications that help them do their job better. What can we, uh, what can we do to control those other sanctioned or unsanctioned apps um, that are within our network infrastructure going undetected? Um, the difficulty to manage security, that's definitely a challenge. You guys see this with regards to having multiple endpoint uh, protection offerings out there, trying to integrate that tightly with a, a firewalling solution, with a, a VPN solution, with a policy controlling solution, adding uh, control and visibility to cloud offerings as well. There's, there's a lot to it and, and the complexity is great. I mean, you know, web, email, you know, all of this stuff, there's a lot of uh, different tools and functions out there that do one bit of the, the puzzle but cannot give you complete security. So the problem I find with that is even though there are a lot of offerings, how do you integrate all of these offerings into one holistic solution? That's a challenge. Now, Cisco have offerings in all of these areas from email security, web security, to advanced malware protection on the endpoint, to ICE enforcing policy on your network, stealth watch, uh, visibility of your network infrastructure cognitive threat analytics, all of these pieces uh, are parts of the puzzle that help secure your network infrastructure, your organization, your users, and your IP within um, the organization. So how do you manage all of this? It is definitely one that's a challenge. And obviously malware and ransomware always, um, you know, everything's as simple as the one click of the finger of a user, next thing you know, you're compromised. So this is always something that's in the back of our mind and at the forefront of, of being compliant and, and making sure uh, um, that this is a, a relevant conversation for businesses today. So a quick one on how it works. I mean, you guys can see up there, uh, compromised sites, malvertise, uh, malvertising, phishing, spamming, email. So other things like unpatched programs, you know, drive-by downloads, malvertising, free software downloads, untrained users is obviously the biggest one that you can't protect against. But um, with something like Umbrella, at least it can catch the, the early, you know, the user that just clicks the link without looking, hopefully, as you can see there, block the malicious web link, um, web, web redirects as well. If there is a, a compromise, an exploit kit um, download, for example, so what it will do is you'll firstly access, you'll access firstly a, a malicious location, download the exploit kit unknowingly. The exploit kit will then do a C2 callback back to the infrastructure, the malicious actors infrastructure, uh, provide the relevant, um, I guess, the malware or the, uh, I guess, the compromisable component there, and, and then send it back, um, another call back and initiate download of uh, encryption key infrastructure. So what I'm saying is once once the exploit kit does its download of this, uh, from the C2, we can block it there. If not, and the malware is still on your infrastructure, say somebody brought in a USB with malware on there or somehow it got into your infrastructure because um, you didn't patch your, your endpoint devices, then at least this way, even with the payload on your device, we, we still have the ability to prevent it from 
calling back home, doing the entire encryption key thing. And this is a fine example with, with WannaCry as, as to how Umbrella detected that, prevented it, even though it was, I believe it was hard-coded IP address, I can't remember, but um, it, even that was uh, preventable in this instance as well. So given that, that level of security and that protection early on, um, automated, automatically and proactively as opposed to reactively, which is what we've always done in the past, that, that's definitely a, a value. I mean, you know, malware doesn't sleep, we do. So <laughs> if somebody clicks a link, it propagates throughout right your network infrastructure. What do you do in that instance, right? So having something like Umbrella to provide that uh, first layer of uh, defense is, is definitely a great value. So what I'll do now is quickly show you guys uh, the licensing there. And in terms of the cloud marketplace, uh, we offer professional and insights. So as you guys can see, um, with regards to professional, best for small companies, insights, best for mid-sized companies, platform, best for you know, advanced security teams and anyone looking to have great visibility and the ability to investigate threats, not just in an organizational capacity, but on a grand scale. Um, interesting thing, with regards to the Australian marketplace, I find extremely relevant insights primarily, uh, professional as, as a great introduction and entry for most of you on a call for your customers out there. Um, Insights usually goes for like 100 plus user deployment where you, you want active and uh, active directory integration as well. Um, User-based policies, uh, log retentions with, as you can see there with regards to uh, AWS, you can do like lifetime uh, log retention there as well. Um, professional would be an excellent way as an introduction to a lot of your customers. So after you do that initial 14 day trial, uh, and there's a lot of value in deploying Umbrella, just like as I mentioned earlier, with regards to malware, phishing, C2 callback protection, catching the threats earlier, giving that visibility, even for roaming clients, which is important as well, right? So given that control, basic web filterings there and basic reporting as well. So I'll show you that on the dashboard. And yeah, so with regards to our customers and what I find relevant here is anyone's looking, like I said earlier, anyone's looking to do active directory integration, Insights, definitely the way to go. Um, if you're just looking to provide that first layer of protection, nice, simple, and easy, professionals definitely um, worth looking into as well. So a quick demo. So what we have here is a Cisco Umbrella dashboard. Um, as you can see on the overview page, we have the deployment health. So we have visibility of the networks, roaming clients, virtual appliances that are on here, network request breakdown. So we can see the total requests coming through. We can set this up to even as far back as 30 days for visibility. Uh, total blocks, security blocks, malware blocks is, uh, is always a good one to keep an eye on. Um, most block requests, so if we're doing it by identity, we have visibility here of uh, so networks. We have Active Directory users and also endpoint devices in terms of visibility. Destination-wise, uh, we have visibility of domains, IPs, and URLs. For going to deployment, it's as simple as going into networks. Uh, click Add up top. What we see is start by pointing your network DNS to our service. So be that on your ISR routers, be that on your DHCP servers redirection to here. We name the uh, network name here. We place, so say, you know, Sydney-based office or Melbourne-based office, place in the IP address, and we have visibility straight from here. So I'm currently on uh, a read-only account, so I don't have admin privi privileges to show you guys, but um, it's as simple as if we're adding in roaming clients as well, we have visibility of current roaming clients on that network infrastructure. We see the DNS layer encrypted, protected. They're using umbrella roaming client. As I mentioned earlier, we can integrate this with uh, any connect clients as well. So we just got to running clients. We can see integration for Windows client, integration for Mac OS, any connect umbrella roaming client as well. So there are options there. Very simple to configure, very simple to use, very quick uh, to deploy and can scale as, as large as your organization, obviously licensing <laughs> um, permitting. Another cool thing is 
if I go into say uh, policies, I can look up different policies on the network infrastructure, so mobile device policies, uh, at home, bypass policy, which is the one currently on the primary network. So if I was to show you that, networks, New York office, takes him back to the same location. We can apply different settings uh, based upon, say, content blocking for something basic like uh, obviously uh, non-relevant to work uh, information all the way to uh, a higher security policy in place. Custom can be applied as well. On the right-hand side, we can just select whatever is necessary, whatever we feel uh, we want to remove as well. Apart from that, we can add uh, allow list, block list as well. So say if we have a marketing department, we want to add them in as, in as well. Marketing is allowed. I believe that's like Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Yep, so Facebook, LinkedIn, access as well. Custom block pages for the, for the policy as well. So you can apply the default umbrella policy. I mean, uh, default block page, sorry. Um, you can apply your own custom page as well, adding a bit more personal uh, personal touch to, to the deployment. We can add in bypass users and also codes if necessary. Cool thing as well is we can do a file inspection as well. Enable allows the, the proxy to block malicious files. So rather than allow or deny for unknown disposition sites, it will at least have that um, inspection component as well. Advanced settings, we can do SSO decryption as well, enable intelligent proxy so decryption as easy as that there. Cool things about reporting. One of the things that I like is how simple it is to just go security overview and we see all our requests, all our block requests, security block requests that are happening within our infrastructure. We can see based upon identities as well, much like uh, the previous screen. If we go to security activities, and most of these screens pivot in, into one another. So if I was to select one in here, it would move into the activity search. So for example, I was looking for the last 24 hours, say eight o'clock. We can check all the events at that point that were blocked. So we have filters here for blocking HTTP, HTTPS, uh, based upon the identity, what categories, if it's something now is of interest to us, we can apply that uh, for visibility content categories as well. So we can really break down really quickly into well, what's going on. We can check by DNS URL or IP requests. Um, again, filter based on uh, ent uh, identity within the infrastructure. You can see Marcus has accessed a lot of uh, infrastructure there. Let's see if there's anything that's been blocked. So if we go back to say security search, set up for this week. We can check by security categories as well from here, just to keep filtering information very easy as there's a lot of information to process. So being able to have visibility of this data quick and easy to allow you to pinpoint um, areas of compromise, pinpoint uh, prevented attacks and then be able to remediate from there, being able to come up with a plan, how to improve say security or policy or uh, user behavior, there's a lot of things that we can do from, from that as well. Another thing that I like on here is app discovery. This gives us visibility into uh, applications within the infrastructure, um, positions their risk uh, factor as well. And I'll just wait for it to load real quickly to show you guys. Okay, I'll come back to that one uh, when it loads. Okay. Um, policies, cool thing is, as we mentioned earlier, there's integration, so third-party integration, there's also uh, custom APIs that we can do. So here are a few uh, in 
possible integrations with, say, Ample Threat Grid, so like a sandboxing solution as well. Um, so reporting. Let's try this one again. But anyways, uh, on the app discovery page, we have visibility of um, the different applications that are within the infrastructure. What is their uh, risk to either the business? Uh, is it compliant? And um, how many DNS requests is, uh, it's been hitting to determine if it's a, a risk to the business or not? So it gives you at least a visibility as well into what's that shadow IT component of your network infrastructure and gives you the ability to at least act upon that as well. So what I'll do right now is I'll get Maria on to quickly run through what we have at Ingram Micro in terms of promise. So, uh, hi everyone, my name is Maria Yani. I'm the uh, vendor manager in our cloud business. So, um, we've just announced Cisco Umbrella onto our cloud marketplace, which is a really exciting uh, launch for us. And um, you can now order it through our marketplace under an annual subscription for both professionals and insights. So to get access to it, you just follow the link provided on the screen, which is our cloud, directly to our cloud marketplace. If you have any issues logging on or getting access to it, please um, contact our cloud team and I'll provide you those details at the end. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, Cisco Umbrella is now on our cloud marketplace, really easy to um, purchase. So you just need to follow the prompts um, provided on our screen. And also, in addition to Cisco Umbrella, we also have a Cisco WebEx team, which we launched earlier in the year. Uh, and that's also a very exciting launch. And I know they'll, on the roadmap, there'll be a, uh, further product announcements coming out shortly. So in terms of how it's priced, it's, uh, what you see is per user per month pricing, but it, it is an annual subscription there. Um, best way to scale it is how many users you have within your network infrastructure. So if you have 100 users, then um, 100 license for um, the offering that you, that you go on with. In, in terms of that, um, next one is... Yes, yeah, so because of um, it's a new launch for us, we do have a promotion on at the moment, which is $100 credit or $200 credit, depending on whether you are purchasing professionals or insights, and it's for every 10 licenses sold. So you can absolutely make the most of that. Um, that's a significant investment by Cisco and Ingram Micro to encourage our partners to give it a go. Uh, so please let us know if you have any questions around this, but we um, have seen quite a lot of um, uh, interest in the market. So uh, I think this will be a really good uptake. So it's as simple as trial it out, go to umbrella.cisco.com, yeah. give it a 14 day trial, and if you generate an opportunity off that, here we have, um, if you're going with professional zone sites, so additional value. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and you can use, uh, this is for a cloud marketplace, right? Yeah, all three cloud marketplaces. Yeah, so eventually, I mean, imagine if something like Ample Endpoint becomes an offering on cloud as well, that'd be awesome. Because then yeah. you can have tighter security for the offering. So endpoint protection with a secure internet gateway, practically the best protection that you can offer today with regards to a roaming user out there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, let us know again if you uh, have any questions or want to look at that offering more detail and we can help you out. Um, the other thing that's really exciting and it's coming up in uh, October in Melbourne and Sydney is our annual cloud summit event. It's our annual cloud uh, event that we host every year and uh, we've had a massive uh, interest in this. We had 500 plus attendees last year and we're expecting them more, um, the same if not more this year. So if you haven't received the details or you haven't seen the invitation come through, um, just go to ingrammicrocloudsummit.com.au and you can register there if you're in Sydney or Melbourne. And if you have any questions or need help, please reach out to our cloud team. Um, details provided on the screen or give us a call. And um, we really hope that you uh, enjoyed the presentation. And Sloan, did you want to finish off? Or? Yeah, um, look, so best best way to get in contact, uh, reach out to me via email, uh, sloan.savic at ingrammicro.com. Um, what I'll do is I'll create a WebEx Teams group. I'll keep it open for about a week or so. Feel free to ask as many questions as you guys like. It doesn't have to just be about the cloud marketplace. It can be anything with regards to Cisco technology, be it from the collaboration, from the security, from the data center or the enterprise networking portfolio. Where, uh, myself and the team are happy to help out in any way we can. So thank you very much for the time on today's session and hoping, and actually looking forward to the questions and hoping actually we get more questions. So yeah, thank you very much for your time, guys.